All right, so tonight we are going to talk all about your UVP. What is a UVP? Well, we talked about it a little bit a couple days ago, but we're going to go a little bit more in depth with it and I'm going to work with you guys on crafting yours. So this is going to be more than just like an instructional meeting. It's going to be more of like a workshop where we're going to be actively crafting your offer. So please blow up the chats, brainstorm with one another. I'll chime in. I'll add my two cents. I'll help you refine it. I will ask a couple of the people that um, I've worked with already to craft their UVP if they want to like share like what that process looked like, how, how they feel after the fact. Um, but first, let's go over. Oops, hold on. I see more people in the waiting room. Uh, sorry, as soon as I, let me stop share and I'll have to go back and admit people. <laughs> Heather, do you mind if I charge you with helping me monitor people and let them in as, okay. Cause when I'm screen sharing, I can't really see. So that way she can keep an eye up for that. All right. So here is what a UVP is, and here is how we are going to start with crafting yours. So a UVP is your unique value proposition. So what value do you offer? How is it unique? And how is it, you know, positioning you on online? How is it positioning you to your audience? So one part of the first part of that is what your customer needs and cares about. This is one of the very most important parts that I think people miss because they think about over here, what do you do really well? Well, what you might do really well and perhaps what you're pretty passionate about, people may not need it, right? Or how you're positioning it is what people don't need, right? So it's a marriage of all three of these, but first you need to think about what does your ideal customer, and we're going to talk about crafting that ideal customer or partner, right? A promoter. What does that ideal customer need and what do they care about? Because remember, this is not a you show. This is not the Caitlin show or the Heather show, or the Renee show. It's your customer show. And that's where a lot of people go wrong is you get on Instagram, you get on Facebook, you get on a live, you pitch your offer. And it's, it's the Courtney show. It's the Renee show. It's, this is how, what I, how I'm awesome. This is what I know. Look at what I can do. And that used to be the old way people use social media, but that's not how we use it anymore because people want to know what's in it for me. Right? So that's kind of the key phrase I want you to think about and put in this circle right here is what's in it for me and not you, <laughs> but speaking from your customer, your customer is going to look at your UVP and go, well, what's in it for me. Okay. And you have to answer that question. So if Renee was to pitch me her UVP and I said, well, what's in it for me? And she was like, well, I um, don't know. Well, then it's not a very clear or effective UVP, right? Because, and, and what it does for that person is either what will they learn? What will they gain? How will it benefit them, right? The next one is, what do you do really well? And don't take this so literally, right? It's not like, oh, I can make cakes really well. I can do this really well. There's a lot of things all of us can do really well, okay? But again, it's all about what do you do really well that also serves a need for your customer, your ideal client, okay? Your ideal partner, your ideal customer, whatever the case may be. And the third one that most people forget about is what your competition does really well. You need to think about what they're doing really well because if you don't do it really well, guess where they're gonna go, <laughs> right? So you need to understand your competition. And I hesitate to use that word competitor or, comp, you know, or competition because we're all collaborators here, you know, in this entrepreneurial space, but essentially you do have to kind of think about what are other people in my space? What are other people who are doing what I want to do? What are they offering? How are they positioned? Right? 
there's a reason you always see a CVS next to a Walgreens, <laughs> right? When CVS is running a sale, guess who else is running a sale? Why do you see gas? You see, every time you see one gas station, you see five. And each one has a different gas price. <laughs> because Casey's will make theirs $2.59. Come and go will make theirs $2.58, right? Because they do their they do their market research. They say, what are my competitors doing? How can I do it better? Okay, and it's not always about making it cheaper. Sometimes it's about creating more value. But you have to understand what does your competitor do really well? And so for some of you guys, and we're going to get into this in the next part, um, is called a SWOT analysis, S-W-O-T. I have to go ahead and open up my um, stuff to be able to find it because I saved something for you guys. Okay, there we go. Gonna open it there and open it here. So a SWOT analysis, S-W-O-T. So they stand for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Okay. You'll see over here, and I'm going to try to make this, I'm going to make this make sense for you because when I first saw this, I was like, whoa, what the it is this? What is this? There's too many things. <laughs> so S W O T and we'll go over what those mean. But first I want to talk about this right here, right? Internal origin. That means that strengths and weaknesses are an internal thing. And by internal, they mean inward you. It, they, they originate from you internally. Okay. So if you want to write a little cheat code on there, they, in, they originate from you your strengths and your weaknesses. That's what they're referring to. Down here, by opportunities and threats, they originate externally, meaning outside of you. Your environment, your competitors, your platforms, right? So they originate outside of you. So when they talk about opportunities and threats, you're not thinking like, how am I threatened by myself? right? Although sometimes we can be our own biggest threat, <laughs> but that would be your weakness, right? Up here, they have helpful and harmful. They have helpful for achieving your objective, right? What's helpful about these strengths and opportunities? And then up top on the right, they have what is harmful to achieving these objectives. So your weaknesses and your threats, your weaknesses and threats are harmful and your strengths and opportunities are helpful. And so right here, your strengths are internally originating helpful things, right? These are helpful things about me that help me achieve my objective. So that's kind of how you use it. I, I keep trying to point to my screen like, um, that you can actually see, <laughs> but it reminds me of, you kind of use it the same way. Do you guys remember using the old school multiplication charts, right? Where you go over three and seven, you're like, oh, 21. You kind of use this the same way internally, you know, the uh, internal origin and you kind of go over from helpful and strengths, internal origin and harmful weaknesses. Okay. So <clears throat> If you have a blank piece of paper, I want you to do those. I want you to do those four squares. And I want you to, as we go over the next slide, I want you to start thinking about some of the other, some of the things to fill those with. Okay, so here's an example. So do these blank. Don't, don't write these things in here because this, the one you're doing that's blank, you're gonna fill in with your own stuff, okay? You're going to use as like a template for you. But for an example, I want you to start thinking of these things now. Things, not your company, but things you do really well. What are some things that you do really well? Are you really resourceful? Are you great at giving advice? Are you really empathic? Are you super organized? Are you driven, right? So what are some of your strengths? 
what are some qualities that set you apart from your competitors? Okay, what are some qualities that set you apart from your competitors? Other ones like internal resources, what are you skilled or knowledgeable, knowledgeable about? So for me, one of the skills I possess that is the quality that separates me from my competitors and is an internal skill is my knowledge and experience with psychology, behavioral modification, my degrees, things like that, right? So, um, and then obviously any tangible assets you have. So like, have you created anything? So for example, Caitlin does Trello. That's, that's a tangible asset. That's something that she creates that she can have domain over, okay? Hold on, I see the chat. I wanna make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, oh, you guys got it. So for weaknesses, what are some things that you lack? What are some things that you really struggle with? Okay. Um, time management, commitment, dedication, vision. It can be so many different things. It can even be technology. I know that's a weakness. That's, that's what people have told me a lot of times. Technology is a, is a weakness of mine. I, I don't really know how to use it. Um, it really frustrates me. Right, so that I would put that as a weakness because that's going to help you craft your offer. You're not going to want to craft an offer that's tech heavy if that's a weakness of yours. You're not going to want to create a program promise or an offer that's for people targeting or that's targeting people who love tech, <laughs> right? Um, so, what are some things that your competitors do better than you? This is another thing I want you to write maybe off to the side of your SWOT analysis is I want you to put one, two, three, four, five. And I want you to pick five people to go study who are in this space you wanna be in and they're successful at it, right? So like for me, I pick people like Trey Bearer and Jesse Lee and Kristen Boss and Michelle. You know, I pick people that I'm like, I wanna be in the network marketing, coaching, entrepreneurial space and I wanna be creating these things. So what are they doing, right? I want you to find people and don't do it yet because you haven't crafted your UVP, right? So don't fill those people in yet unless you have crafted it, but just put one, two, three, four, five, because you're going to fill those in later. Once you identify your UVP, I want you to go find other people who have something similar. And I want you to like write their Instagram down or write their names down or their podcast, because you're going to become a student of theirs. You're going to really study what they do, how they do it, what they offer, because you want to know what did they do better than you? Because if they do it better than you, that's where your audience is going. Right? Uh, what are your resource limitations? So for some of you guys, um, that may look like what programs or softwares you have access to or know how to use. Um, that could be something like that. Um, and then right here, an unclear. So this may be something you have right now. Sorry, if hiccups. This may be something you have right now, an unclear UVP, an unclear unique selling proposition. A lot of you guys, if you're struggling to create an engaging audience, if you're struggling to create content and you're struggling to convert sales or recruit, the problem is clarity. That's the problem. You don't have clarity around your unique value proposition. And so your audience doesn't either. Your audience doesn't have that clarity. And we've said this since day one, when you speak to everybody, you actually speak to nobody, right? So that is probably one of the weaknesses that you're experiencing right now, but hopefully we're gonna alleviate that by the end of this. Hey, Tiggs. Um, all right, so opportunities, right? underserved markets for specific products. So what opportunities exist? When you think out there, oh, I wish this existed. I wish this resource existed. I wish there was a person who did this. Have you guys ever thought that, right? You guys ever said like, oh, I had that idea years ago, right? Like when something happens, you're like, man, I thought of that before it became a thing, <laughs> right? Or you've thought now, man, wouldn't it be like really cool like if this existed? what opportunities exist okay where do you feel like people are underserved in fact you could take it one one step further and say what people are underserved right 
So you could say, oh, I feel like single moms are a really underserved community in this space. I feel like military spouses are a really underserved community. I feel like um, Christian entrepreneurs are, right? Like you can, I feel like they're very underrepresented or they're very underserved, okay? Um, are there a lot of competitors in your area, like in your arena? So like, let's use Heather, for example, she's gonna target military spouses. Are there a lot of people out there that are well-known that offer advice and knowledge and help and resources for military spouses? I can't think of any off the top of my head and I'm a military spouse and have been for 14 years. <laughs> so the fact that I don't know of any off the top of my head, right? Um, tells me that that's a very underserved or underrepresented community and that there is a high opportunity there. Um, is there an emerging need for your products or services? So for me personally is I'm starting to target network marketers to help modernize their business. Is there an emerging need for our product and service? Absolutely. <laughs> because we can see that the market is changing and more and more and more people are needing this. But if you're like, I help network marketers do home parties, is that an emerging need? No. <laughs> no. Um, and then do you have any press or media or anything like that? Is there, that's kind of, we don't really need that part. All right, last one is threats. So are there emerging competitors that you have, right? Like, are there people who were like, ah, oh, crap. Like for me, Trey Bear is an emerging competitor. He talks a lot about the same exact things that I talk about. Now, I also use him as inspiration because that's all about collaboration over competition, but still he's a competitor. If what I don't do well, my audience will be driven to him because if they're looking for me, they're looking for people like him, right? So that's a threat. A changing regulatory environment. We actually as network marketers very much have to be aware of this. We are, the, um, I should say we, but social media platforms, ads, lots of groups are now not permitting anything regarding weight loss or diets. And so we have to be very careful. And so a lot of they're including a lot of supplement companies, weight loss companies, people that target weight loss, weight management, diet, and blah, blah, they're targeting that. So that is a changing regulatory environment we have to be aware of. That's a threat. Same thing with anything regarding MLM, right? How many of you guys have been kicked out of the Facebook group before? <laughs> That's a changing regulatory environment, okay? Um, MLM people apparently are not allowed to use MailChimp per Caitlin. <laughs> um, now it doesn't mean you can't use it, but you can't use it to promote your MLM company which is why you have to have this go between with your UVP and your lead magnet, okay? Because it's becoming a change in this regulatory environment to lead with your opportunity or product, okay? So that's a threat and we have to, that's why we're doing all this stuff because of that changing environment. That's a threat to our industry. It's a threat to our way of life. And so we, we definitely have to think of it in, the, in this SWOT analysis. <laughs> Um, changing customer attitudes towards your company. So for us, it's not necessarily a company, but network marketing in general. Would you agree that more and more people seem really negative about network marketing? They seem really negative and put off about the idea of MLM. Absolutely. Because that's a changing customer attitude. And so again, we have to shift. We cannot present or position ourselves as network marketers used to. So we have, that's a threat. And so for those of you guys who are wondering, well, Courtney, why are we doing all this stuff? Why are we talking about like marketing things? <laughs> why are we talking about lead magnets and funnels and email lists? And this is like a real business. What are you doing? <laughs> um, that's mainly because having done a SWOT analysis on network marketing, the threats are very, very, very real. And they truly do threaten your way of life and your ability to run a company like this, okay? And so you have to lean into these other opportunities 
and your strengths and pivot. Okay. So now let's talk about your UVP, right? So your unique value proposition. And I'm going to talk a little bit about exactly what that is. So we already did the, the you know, your little Venn diagram. But we're going to talk number one is identify your target market. Your unique value proposition should help you connect with your target market in order to create this proposition that builds a, a good solid relationship and positions you as the authority to them. You first need to identify who that is. Okay, so, oh dear, sorry. So you first need to identify your target market, your target market, your target audience. So who is that? It's not, it's not just moms. It's not just women. It's not just entrepreneurs, right? It's a specific person. And I know that a lot of you guys are really nervous to narrow it down because you think I'm already getting nobody. Oh my gosh. I'm already getting nobody. Why would I narrow it down even more and push my possible people away, <laughs> right? I know a lot of you are probably having that fear. Like that's why most people don't niche down is because they think the reason that they're not getting people is because, you know, they're like, I just need to open my, my funnel wider and catch more people. But that's not the problem. The problem is your message isn't clear enough. You're not speaking to the right people. So if I were to go onto Sue Ellen's or Alicia's or Patty's or Florencia's uh, Instagram, when I know right away who they're speaking to, I don't know, I don't have my phone on me, so I can't check. Is you're lucky. But that's the whole point. The whole point is that on your content, whatever it is, whether it's your funnel, your lead magnet, your podcast, your blog, your social media, whatever, people should know who you're speaking to, who you serve by your content. If it's a if it's like all mix matched about like literally everything under the sun, they're going to be confused. And a confused buyer isn't a buyer. I want you to write that down somewhere. A confused buyer is not a buyer at all. <laughs> okay. Like how many of you guys have ever picked up something that you were like, what is, what's like at the store? Like, Whoa, what's this? And you're like, I um, don't know what it is. I mean, it, it looks like it's a hair straightener, but I can't, uh, can't tell you don't buy it because you don't know what the f it does. You don't know how to use it. The last thing you want to do is spend $80 on a hair tool that you have to look up on YouTube and do some research and figure out how to use it, right? So a confused buyer is not a buyer at all. So if you're making reels, if you're making content, if you're making posts, if you're going live and you're not getting great engagement or conversion, right? Conversion is when your content creates a customer or a lead. If it's not doing that, it's because you're lacking clarity. And that's what this UVP does, okay? So I want you to figure out who is your target audience? Who are you speaking to? Drop it in the chat below who you think your target audience is. Give some examples. I already worked with a couple people. So I worked with Caitlin, I worked with Mandy, I worked with Florencia, I worked with Heather. Sorry, I'm looking at other names on here. Stay-at-home moms of toddlers. Tracy is large family moms. Yep, so like large family overwhelmed mamas who don't have systems in their lives and they feel hectic without order, right? First time moms and large family moms. Yep. Keep them coming guys. If you don't have one yet, just write down who you think. Moms who aren't present and dread the day to day growing families, okay? Moms who want adventure with toddlers. I love that one, awesome. There's some more guys. A lot of you guys who probably aren't saying anything are the ones who probably want it the most, who want help the most. So I can't help you if you don't put it in the chat what you think it is and then we can help refine it, okay? So it's not a competition to see like who has the best. I need you to write them in the chat so I can say, oh, that's awesome. Maybe we could tweak it like this, okay? Uh, stay-at-home moms who struggle with mental health and have multiple kids. Okay, perfect. So stay-at-home moms of multiples. Well, not multiple, but I think that technically means like twins and stuff, but like 
So stay at home moms who struggle with maybe mental health and self care, staying sane. <laughs> moms who feel like they're running around like crazy all day, but at the end of the day, feel like they didn't do anything. Special needs mamas shift their mindset and increase joy and fulfillment. Full time moms who also work outside of the home. I like that one. I mean, I like all of these. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> pushing moms to help transform their possibilities. Stay at home moms with depression. Women who always put themselves last. Okay. So, Emily, instead of just women, what kind of women? So, women who put themselves last, but how could you get a little bit more specific? Are they. Are they also struggling with something? Are they moms? Does it not matter if they're moms? Because um, remember, it's not only what there is a need, but what you're passionate about. Stay-at-home moms with high anxiety and depression. Okay. So, when you're creating your target audience, I want you to pick five things that describe them. Okay. So older women who struggle, lacking energy, waking, joining, feel like younger. So helping older women, try to think of a way to word this because you have all the key elements. So, okay. So you basically, you, okay. So Patty put these like five. So they're older women. Or they're middle-aged older women, okay. Mature women. So that like I'm trying to think of like a one word that would combine that that those two age groups you're talking about, you're you're speaking to. Um help mature women and then so just kind of um try to think like love their body again through 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 nutrition, love their body again through uh maybe not even love their body again, but feel rejuvenated through proper nutrition. Um, but I would also say like, what are some of the pain points that they have? Well, some of them are probably, yeah, I know what to eat or maybe they don't, right? But they're like, okay, I, I know what to eat, but my problem is I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed by all the options. So maybe you could throw in something in there like, and we'll do this in a second, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, so Mandy put five things, okay? Five things that describe I'm writing something down. So five things that describe, so adjectives that describe your target audience. So Mandy, ooh, chat no over. <laughs> uh, overwhelmed, disheveled, discouraged, busy, unorganized. Okay, perfect. It helps overwhelm moms manage their life by feeling their own cup first. Okay, so that sounds like a self-care thing. Absolutely. Um, okay, so five things that describe your target audience. What are some adjectives that describe them? Do they feel um, overwhelmed? Do they feel frustrated? Do they feel, um, you know, overwhelmed, upset, forgotten, right? All kinds of things. So what are some five adjectives that describe them? And then I want you to do five, five action. So describe five like action oriented things that you can do. So, uh, blah, blah, blah. so like an example in here. So um, Rachel put increase joy and fulfillment, transform possibilities. See, these are verbs. They start with verbs. So that's why when Emily put Emily, whoo, that is a big ass mosquito. Sorry. <laughs> bombarded me. So women who always put themselves last. So their needs, so figuring out a verb. So what do you, so now it's how you're serving them. What are you doing, right? By serving up, you know, helpful advice or simplifying. That's a good one. So Patty, that may be a good one for you because some people, again, only after you do some market research, why are middle-aged women or why are mature women struggling with taking care of their bodies, right? Is it because their life is so hectic that they, they, they just don't have any simple go-to 
healthy regimens? Is it because they are overwhelmed by all of the options, right? So simplifying is a good, a good verb word. Um, manage, right? I saw this, Heather said, um, help moms manage life by filling their cup first. Um, increase energy and focus. Yep. Yep. So five like verbs, how are you going to serve them? So are, you know, you're like offering advice, simplifying routines, curating content, like see how they're all like verbs, like curating content, serving advice, developing strategies. Yeah, things have changed so much with diet. So maybe it's all about simplifying. Simplifying health. Mr. Moth. I am like a, <laughs> a magnet for bugs right now but my house is so loud, so can't come in there. So again, this goes back into that three Venn diagram thing of what problems are they having? So I'm gonna use Patty's example, right? She talks about one thing she's really good at is cooking, healthy living, um, you know, uh, making like diets approachable and not diets, but lifestyles, right? Like all those things, those are what she's really good at. So once you think those things you're really good at, what problems do people have around that, right? So it could be like the diet industry is really overwhelming. You could educate, simplify. I feel like we're on the verge of crafting Patty's UVP right now. So I'm gonna go with this, okay? So it's just, it, I feel like your UVP has, based on what you're telling me, it has a lot to do with creating and simplifying, whether it's creating healthy, some creating healthy meal plans for overwhelmed, like for the, for the diet overwhelm, right? Um, simplifying modern diets for the everyday mature woman, right? Like they want to know like, okay, keto, but I don't have time to sit here and research all about keto and create a keto grocery list and research 30 days of keto. I don't have time for that. <laughs> right. So I think a lot of your verbs are, what are they, what are they needing? Right. They're like, they're overwhelmed. They, the, the diet, the diet culture is just saturated. So they don't know what to do. They feel, they feel preyed on, I'm sure. Right. <laughs> And then also think, what are your competitors doing, right? So kind of look up other people in that space. What are they doing? Yeah, Rachel has some verbs. Create, curate, develop, transform, magnify, shift. Absolutely. Simplify. So Mandy says, inspire cleanliness and organization. Create simple routines. Balancing life and family. Planning to succeed in your day-to-day. Designing systems for busy working moms. I think it's using mother crafting simple nutrition to create physical freedom. Getting started made simple. So Florence uses what we did is <clears throat> she wanted, so she's like, I'm really good at, I always find myself giving advice to new moms and basically teaching them. So for some people who were new on here is we're not leading with Thrive. And so that may feel confusing. Um, we're not leading with Thrive. We're leading with you and your particular expertise and knowledge and what you're really good at. That's what your UVP is. And we'll be crafting essentially like an offer from that. And in that offer can be the opportunity or the product because that can also serve people. But we're looking for, pe we're looking for a way to get a win-win for your, for your potential customer, for your leads and a win-win for you. So how is this a win-win? Well, when they follow you, they get value, whether they buy or not. You're probably thinking, well, how is that a win-win for me? <laughs> because I'm giving free value and I'm not getting anything from it. Well, you're gaining an audience and guess what? Uh, let's say Emily follows me because I offer a lot of advice on how to grow as a network marketer. Let's say she's not in my company, right? Um, and I, I give advice on how to grow authentically in the online space as a network marketer. She will promote me. She will talk about me. She will share my podcast in her stories. She will boast about me, right? And 
Emily may never be my customer, but who Emily knows may be my customer. Who Emily knows and exposes me to may eventually partner with me. Um, and then also I may put out some kind of a, a lead magnet. I may create something like a 30 day guide to getting 10 leads in your business. And she may buy it for me, even though she's not in my business. So it's a win-win. She wins, I win. Um, okay, so those five things that describe, those adjectives that describe your target audience. Oh. Sorry, like freaked me out. <laughs> I just felt a little hand tapping on me. Um, five things that describe your your ideal customer or your ideal um, avatar, they call it. And then your your verbs. How are you going? To, how are you going to address it? And and more specifically, not just how are you going to address it, but how is it going to serve them? And you you do that from a place of what are they experiencing? Right. So let's do an example. Drop in the chat. What are some difficulties you experience building a network marketing business? Drop in the like what are or, or, or business in general. What are some things that you experience? What are some hardships or um, difficulties that you experience? Finding time. Okay. What else? Staying focused, staying consistent, okay? Relating to people, getting objections. Do you know what all these start with? Verbs. So by figuring out what your target market struggles with, they're telling you exactly how to treat it, right? They're telling you exactly how to treat their illness, okay? Sorry, I'm reading Cammie's. <laughs> I see Cammie's, I'm like, reading. Oh, she went hardcore, guys. She's trying to, she's trying to get an A. Well, she got an A, okay. <laughs> she, she, she tried to be the star student, so. She's not trying, she's doing it. <laughs> um, okay, so as you can see, all of these struggles that you're talking about. Okay, so Patty, yours says technology. What about technology? using technology, accessing technology, being consistent with it, right? When you do that, oh, go ahead. It's more of how to use technology. Before this, I have never used Instagram other than to maybe post two pictures. Yep. How to do reels. And I mean, we're doing training to do all those things, but it still sometimes feels like I push a boulder uphill to get to that end result. Yeah, so, no, absolutely. Yeah. So that's one of the things. So if if I so if I were doing market research right now and I were asking all of you guys, what are some objections you have about building a network marketing business, right? Because I help network marketers grow businesses. I would you guys are all my target audience. If you're not, because you already work with me, but if you were not on my team, you guys would be my target audience. And I'm asking you, what are some of the things that you experience, right? Um, and a lot of you said finding time, staying focused, staying consistent, getting objections relating to people. Um, being organized, um, how to use technology, you know, doing things for me too. So finding a work-life balance. You guys just gave me an entire list of all the things I can help you do. Guess what, Caitlin? I can help you find a work-life balance inside your network marketing business. Hey, Patty, wouldn't it be great if you have if you found if you found a mentor who could help you utilize technology and simplify the process to start getting followers? Right? You know, Renee. I can help you find more organization in your business and time management so that you can stay focused and build a profitable business online. All right, I'm using your own words against you, essentially. It's kind of what it, how it works. So when you identify your target audience and what they struggle with most, they give you the answers for your program promise or for your offer promise, okay? Wording things in a compelling yet non-salesy way. Exactly. So. Um, understanding it. Oh, okay. um, 
yeah, it just went to me. Oh, what did what did Cami say? So Cami said, uh, my UVP is connecting people to local resources, help um, resources to help them through difficult times. I do this in both my jobs. It comes naturally to my ability to be believe uh, to be believable results in an organic relationship, and the result is trusting relationship. So she just clearly identified like what she wanted to do, who she was targeting. Um, sort of inquiring minds wanted to know. So finding the right things to say, okay? So it'd be like, Sabrina, wouldn't it be so much simpler to build a network marketing business if you always knew the right thing to say to the right customer at the right time to get the leads that convert to sales? You'd be like, yes, right? I spoke directly to her. I wasn't like, you know, who wants, you know, who wants to grab my content calendar? People would be like, um... I mean, I guess, I don't know, probably not that, I don't know. But if I said, you know, hey, overwhelmed newbie network marketer, do you struggle with finding the right thing to say to convert your leads into sales? Trust me, I do too. What I found was blah, 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 grab my 100, whatever, my 100 conversation starters to turn any lead into a customer overnight. Half of you guys would be like, wait, where's the buy button? Where do I click to buy, <laughs> right? Because it's it speaks directly to you, right? Hey, newbie, new network marketer, you're like, that's me, right? Maybe not some of you guys, but it speaks directly to you. Because if, even if I just said, hey, hey, entrepreneur, you'd be like, does that, does that mean me? Maybe she means like e-commerce people. Does she mean network marketers, right? You ever like, walk in the mall and someone's like and you you're like hey wait are you waving at me or right and you wave back only to realize they're waving at somebody else <laughs> and you're like oh i feel stupid that's kind of like this you want it to be ultra clear so it's not like you're waving from across the room you're literally walking up and giving them a handshake like hey <laughs> i'm looking at you right that's why you want to get ultra clear so florencia speaks to you know uh, new moms and moms of many, but also moms that just feel overwhelmed and need advice on motherhood. <laughs> like they're like, I need like, what do I do? So she basically is like the mother, the mom manual. So you know when people are like, I don't know, it didn't come with a manual. Go to Florencia. She's got it. She's got the manual for you. <laughs> um. So there's that part, right? It's knowing who to speak to and what their problems are. What are they experiencing? So I was talking to Heather the other night and her, her ideal audience a lot is um, military spouses uh, or military spouses and mothers, right? Um, and she wants to help them not feel lost because a lot of times that can happen. So as a military spouse, you end up surrendering a lot of who you are, you know, and a lot of military spouses and moms end up kind of feeling overwhelmed in the chaos and they, they lose themselves. And a lot of that, and then a lot of it, she may speak to all those things, but she also is going to offer some like tips and tricks on how to, you know, developmentally engage with your kiddos and how to manage mom life by yourself, because that may have to happen from time to time as a military spouse, right? So, but that's very different than a single mom. The struggle a single mom has is very different than a mother of a, than a, a, a mom and military spouse, right? Because you're juggling different things. So it, she speaks to two, to, you know, so it's two totally different audiences, and they each have different issues, you know, because you are in a committed relationship, but you're having to act as a single mom. So how do you? Be a, be a spouse, run the household, be a mom, do all these things. And some people may just be like, oh, single moms do it all the time. But it is a little different just because you're having to include the spouse. <laughs> you know, you're having to be like, oh, how are we going to work? How are we going to, you know, let's say dad's deployed. Okay, we've created all these amazing routines that Heather taught us with our kiddos and we're doing all these activities, but now dad comes home and messes it all up. <laughs> right? She can specifically talk about that. She can specifically help the mom with, okay, so now what? You've developed all these amazing routines and activities, and now dad's coming home. How can we help dad integrate into this routine? How can we help the kiddos adjust to that? That speaks to a specific audience, 
and it solves a specific problem for that audience. Okay. And then again is what are your competitors doing? Okay, yeah, your spouse is like an extra child, whether they're military or not. Okay, so <laughs> however many children you have, plus one. <laughs> All right, so you guys hopefully have written down your five, your five adjectives that describe who you're serving, the five verbs that describe what their problems are or how you can potentially help them. And if you can't think about how you can potentially help them, write some of their problems struggling, you know, struggling to raise the kiddos by themselves, um, feeling really overwhelmed, um, difficulty, difficulty maintaining organization, right? Um, you know, what are some of those things? This can also apply to those who have spouses who work. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, that's another thing too. So Renee brought, brought up a good point. So while Heather is really niched down, to serving military families essentially and spouses raising children inside that military relationship it's also applicable to other things I, I guarantee if a mom is not a military spouse she still can find value in some of the things heather talks about if heather posts you know six rainy day activities to do with your kids for under five dollars someone's not going to look at her instagram and go damn it i'm not a military spouse i can't use those <laughs> right? Like, go, darn it. Right. Um, or someone like Renee said, might look at Heather and go, Hey, my, my husband's not in the military, but he's a firefighter and he is pretty much gone all the time. This sounds like it could apply to me too. Right. So don't be afraid to niche down because people will still find you. Right. We use Jesse Lee all the time. Jesse Lee has one of the number one entrepreneurial podcasts in the world, which means that she's serving more than just network marketers even though her primary target audience is network marketers. The value that she's offering serves a vast array of people, right? Okay, so for that UVP, so now you're going to kind of craft it all. And what, what I find really beneficial is to try to put it in an I help statement, right? So I help blank. I help this person, I help overwhelmed new moms, or I help new moms, right? I help uh, new businesses, I help, I don't know why I have my hiccups. Uh, Caitlin says, I help moms of, mo you know, moms of toddlers, um, you know, to, again, and use, so use something from that other list to simplify blank, whatever you're, you know, to simplify uh, nutrition, to do this thing or, you know, to achieve this. So I help this kind of person do this specific thing. Can I call out an actionable step after we have created? Yep. Um, and then how do you serve? How do you, how do you help them? Right? So ideally we want to create some kind of offer, but we won't get there yet. Okay. So how are you going to serve them? Right. Do you, you know, I, I help mature women love their bodies again through simplifying nutrition and whatever. Right. I know now when I go on Patty's page, I can expect the primary audience to probably be women over the age of, let's say, 35, right? And she's going to be giving nutrition advice. She's probably going to be showing me easy, simple recipes. And I know that when I go there, I'm going to be educated. So an example of something Patty could offer that audience in addition to her content, right? Is, do you think that if Patty created a pantry clean out list or like a, a, a pantry swap out list? So 
50 things in your cupboard to swap out for healthy organic alternatives. Do you think if she had like a, a list of those things, do you think people in her target audience would like that? Mm hmm Yes. Because <laughs> they're looking for something simple. It's geared towards people that are wanting to be healthier. And it's a quick win. They can take that list, clean out those things in their, in their pantry, and go buy the replacements that she's talking about. Simple. Done. Right? Um, another thing could just be uh, 30 days of uh, five ingredients or less breakfasts. People would go, ooh, that sounds easy. <laughs> Right? That sounds nice. Another thing too, she does a lot of vegan recipes. People who are converting to vegan are so overwhelmed because there's just so much to learn, so much to know. So like, so much, they're like, oh my God, I got to throw everything out and I can only eat the grass in my backyard. Like, oh my God. Right. And so if she just had, you know, um, how, whatever, like how to transform your, you know, how to easily transform your favorite you know, your favorite recipes in three simple steps using these ingredients. And she had like a little guide. People would be like, yes, please, please help me. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about when we're, when we're thinking about creating your offers. So what are some things you can do to give those people some quick, some quick wins, right? Um, let's say if you're like, I, I help um, I help people relocating to Kansas city, discover, discover the, you know, whatever, discover restaurants, whatever. I don't even know. discover, discover the local, the local cuisine. And they had, it was like, grab our top 10 list here. I guarantee as a person moving to Kansas city, I would follow them and I would grab that list ASAP right? It's a simple, that's what we're talking about. When I talk about lead magnets, I don't want you guys to overcomplicate it in your head. That's all it is. So if in their Instagram, right, if, if the Instagram was called discover KC and it was like, you know, uh, we help, you know, we help, uh, new, new Kansas city residents discover the beauty of this city. And it said, grab our top 10 list here. I'd go click. And I entered my name an email and boom, in my email, I got a top 10 list of the best restaurants, a top 10 list of activities, a top 10 list of whatever. I would be like, yes. And now they have my information. Now they can email me. Hey, did you know that there's a new carnival coming to Kansas City? Be the first to register here because I'm in their email list now, right? That's kind of the whole idea. That's, that's what we want you guys to do by crafting this, this UVP. As some of you guys' wheels are turning and you're crafting this, you can probably see how creating content gets a lot easier, right? So if Patty's like, okay, I, I know who I'm going to target. I'm going to target, you know, mature women who want to get healthier and have a better relationship with food. And I want to simplify overcomplicated diets. I want to simplify our, your grocery list. I, you know, um, I'm, I'm simplifying nutrition so you can fall in love with it again you know, guess what she can do now? She can do like reels of, uh, or posts or blog posts or whatever she wants to do of, you know, common, common fad diets that she sees and why they're not as healthy as these alternatives that you can make at home. Or, you know, again, those easy, those easy swap out lists, like, Okay, so you're going vegan. These are the, the top 10 things that you want to swap out. And here's what I suggest getting, right? Um, yeah, so Rachel said, after you craft your UVP, put it in a reel or a TikTok to declare to your audience you who you are and what value you offer. Bold letters in the beginning of your video. Yes, and so you, wanna, you want to do this as often as possible in any content that you create. You want to speak directly to that person, right? Uh, yeah, or a pinned video on Facebook. So you can pin a video to the top of your feed. 
And also here's a tip, when you craft a UVP, I want you to forever ditch the saying, hey guys, hey everybody, stop saying that because you're not speaking to everybody. <laughs> I'm a big culprit of that. So I'm like calling call myself out too, okay? So why? Why don't you wanna say like, hey guys, hey everybody, because you're not speaking to everybody, right? When I get on here, if I'm like, hey guys, you're like, hey. But if I'm like, hey Renee, you'd be like, oh, like instantly, like your brain has this like thing it does, the chemistry changes, right? So obviously you can't always do that on like a Facebook live. You can't get on and just instantly know who's watching. Now you can obviously, as people are hopping on, you can be like, hey Renee, hey Caitlin, hey Rachel, thanks so much for watching. But when you get on, you'd be like, hey mamas, right? Whoever you speak to, hey, my tired mamas out there, you know, Patty speaking like, you know, hey ladies, you know, whatever it is you want to like speak or you can just, or, or here's the, here's a novel idea. Hey, hello, good morning. <laughs> And, and don't insert anything after that. <laughs> it's like, good morning, you know, and then just be like, how are, how are you doing? Just like, how are you doing? Not how are you guys? How is everybody? How are you doing today? Let me know in the comments below. What did you do this morning when you woke up? You want to make it on like a live or even in a written post. You want to make it sound like I'm only talking to Kami right now. I'm only talking to Emily. Rachel, this post is just for you, right? That is how crystal clear you want your UVP to be. And a lot of you guys are feeling confusion because when you make posts, you don't know who you're speaking to. You're kind of just speaking to anybody and hoping somebody latches on, right? You want to go fishing in the right pond with the right bait to catch the, to catch the right fish. I, I hate using the word like, bait, but I, I think you catch my meaning. Like you want to know, you don't want to put a worm on a hook and be like, all right, whatever I catch, I catch, I guess. <laughs> right. That's not a great way to run your business. I know that I only want to catch salmon. One thing I'm not going to do is go to the ocean to go there and I'm not going to use a certain kind of bait. I need to learn if I want to catch salmon, I need to know where they swim, when they're there and how to catch them. This is exactly what your UVP does. But if you don't have one, a lot of you are trying to catch salmon in the middle of the ocean and you're like, why aren't I catching salmon? Isn't the ocean where fish live? Right? Like, yeah, some fish live there. Absolutely. But not the fish you want. So I want you guys to craft this crystal clear. So I know some of you guys are going to overthink it. And you're going to constantly be in this revolving door of ideas where you are continually changing it. And I speak from experience. Okay. It, it feels terrifying to pick something, right? I'm telling you to pick something when half you guys can't even pick where you want to eat. Okay. If I say, Hey guys, where you want to go eat right now? Half you guys will go, I don't know, wherever you want to go. No, no. You need to be the person who goes, I want Mexican. <laughs> I'm feeling like Korean food right now. Let's go there. Okay. That, you need to be that person. So not right now. I'll put in a second. I'm trying to like, no one in my family knows what they want to do right now. My dog's included. Um, and so that is what you need to do. And, and for me specifically, that was very hard. So if it's hard for you, I totally understand. And here's the thing. It's not set in stone. You can always change it a little bit later if you decide, hey, that wasn't really what I, what I wanted to do. So I don't, you're not getting married to your audience, okay? You're not getting married to them. And so you kind of, here's the thing. You, you know a lot of things. You're good at a lot of things. You're passionate about a lot of things. You do a lot of things. 
but I want you to think of something. Your UVP is like your primary content. It's primary. You can have secondary content. Okay. I am also a mother and I homeschool and I'm a military spouse, but that is not part of my UVP. I do not help military spouses specifically. I do not help new homeschool moms learn how to transition into the homeschool space. I do not do that. Right. But it also doesn't mean that I never share anything about homeschool. I do sometimes. Absolutely. But I don't want to share it so much that I confuse my audience. I don't want to share so much homeschool content that my audience thinks, oh, has she turned into somebody who teaches us how to homeschool? Because this doesn't feel relevant to me anymore. But so you can have your primary content. But then you can also have secondary content, right? So just remember, whatever you post most about are the followers you're going to get, and that's what they expect value in. And that's the offer you have to center it around. So let's use, um, Tracy said something in here, so I'm staring at her next to me now on the screen. So let's say this, let's say Tracy only ever posts about um, uh, chickens and, and her faith. Let's say she only ever posts about those things and nothing about Lavelle, nothing about coaching, nothing, nothing about anything, okay? She only ever posts about her chickens and about her faith. Guess what people are gonna expect when they follow her? To hear about her faith and her chickens. Do you think when she starts talking about other things that they're gonna listen or they're gonna be confused? They might be confused, okay? Or if all she ever posts about is coaching and thrive and content, when she starts posting about chickens and her faith, people are gonna be like, wait, did our coach just turn into a chicken lady? I'm confused. Is she now coaching us on how to raise chickens? Right? <laughs> She's like, yes, I will coach you on how to raise chickens. Um, so that's why, and remember, a confused buyer is not a buyer at all. And so if people land on your page and they don't know what you're offering and they don't know what your unique value positioning is, they're not going to follow you and or buy from you, okay? So maybe what you can do to do like a test is you can ask a friend or ask someone in here to hop on your Instagram or Facebook or whatever you use most and say, what do you see the most? What do you see the most of? And let them tell you. Hey guys, go to my stuff. I'm going to tell you right now, Tracy, it's God and chickens. It's Jesus and chickens. So maybe what Tracy would do now is let's say that like, get out of my Maybe what Tracy can do is if people are, if she's positioning herself as the chicken God lady, right? Or the God and chicken lady, the chicken God. But like, um, is essentially she can actually start creating offers or knowledge about your chicken starter kit 101 right so you want to become a chicken lady grab this top 10 list that i assembled right like what do you need okay or she can do certain things around her faith right she can do coaching around her faith or she can do certain things you know uh how to you know grab my grab my guide on how to study the book of Esther or how to study that. I think that's a book, whatever, how to, whatever, how to study the book of Psalms in order, how to, how to do X, Y, and Z, you know, grab my 30 day devotional here. Right. Those are some things that she could do. But if all she posted about was God and chickens and she was like, Hey, uh, grab my content calendar or grab my something about health and wellness, grab my 30 day, clean out your closet, clean out your pantry list, people would be like, huh? Am I cleaning them out for eggs? No, I'm doing. <laughs> right? Am I just going to clean out my pantry and not eat and only eat the bread of life? I don't know. Like, <laughs> so, you know, just certain things you want to make sure that it's ultra clear. Now, I'm not saying that Tracy can never post about Harry Potter, that she can never post about all these other things. That's all secondary content, right? She can definitely 
post about those things but it's secondary content. Well, I'm not saying it is, but if we're using the example of chicken and chickens and Jesus, then all of her other stuff is secondary, okay? So you wanna make sure that whatever fits within your UVP is primary and every piece of content you put out is filtered through that. So once you create it, you say, okay, does this serve my ideal audience? Does it solve a problem that they have? And if it doesn't, should I post it? Okay. So let's say I have something. I'm like, wow, I just discovered something inside, you know, as a homeschool mom. I could post it. I could not, but I'll filter it through my UVP and go, okay, does this, does this help network marketers grow in their business? It might, if they're, if they're network marketers that also homeschool, well, how can I make it solve a problem? Okay, if you're a network marketer who homeschools due to the climate of our environment, you know, due to the political climate of our world right now, or due to the whatever of our world right now, you may find yourself in a whole new world of time management. So I could spin it that way. How to manage your time as a new homeschool mom when you're working from home. Right? So there is a way, that's how I could filter. I could say, wow, I just found this really cool thing and I want to share it. But instead of just being like, Bleh and like word vomiting it all over my audience when they didn't ask for it, I need to find a way to make it mesh and fit into my UVP, okay? So I want you guys to take these two fives, these two lists of five things, and I want you to try to pick pieces of them and fit them into your I help statement. You might need to move them around like a puzzle. So if you have your five adjectives that describe your, your, your ideal client, and you have these adjectives and problems that they solve, excuse me, your verbs over here of the problems they're having or how you solve them, you might need to kind of like move them all around and try different combinations until it feels really good. Until you feel like, I feel passionate about helping that kind of person. Like, I feel like if I were to help them, I would feel incredibly fulfilled. And so that's the final thing I want to leave you guys with is once you craft that I help statement, once you figure out who you're helping and how you're going to help them and what problems you're going to solve, I want you to think if I helped that tired mom reduce her overwhelm and stress and put herself first again, right? Like that's your I help statement. How would I feel about that? If you're like, I would feel freaking fantastic. I would feel like I'm on cloud nine. I would feel like I won even if I never sold them anything, I would feel like I helped them. Then that's your answer. Then that is your answer because if you feel really good about it and you feel impassioned about it and you feel like, I want to do that. I want to help overwhelm moms learn how to prioritize things in their life to stop putting themselves last. And if I could help a mom do that, I would just be like, whoa, yes then you're gonna be so crystal clear in your content. You're gonna be excited to make content now. And something that I might talk about on Wednesday's team Zoom is that content wheel that I put in the chat earlier. It wasn't really gonna be useful <laughs> to talk about it. And I don't wanna talk about it now because we've already been on for an hour, but I wanna also give you guys time to craft this UVP and to really create your I help statement and to become super crystal clear so that we can help you create an offer and then create that content wheel. Because creating that content wheel gives you that inspiration to move forward with, you know, posts, lives, videos, and again, even offers. Okay. So I hope that was super helpful for you guys. If you have questions and you want to refine it further, or, or you're like, okay, I think I've got like 80% of the way there. Can you look over this for me? Or how does this sound? Then you can go ahead and message me and or put it in Thrive Army and we can kind of fine tune it from there. Once you feel like you've got it like 75% of the way and you're like, I'm feeling really good about it, but I know it could be better. Then write me or put it in Thrive Army and we can totally really just kind of put the little put the little sauce on it, <laughs> right? We can sprinkle, sprinkle the little, the little spices on it, make it, make it perfect, make it taste just right. Okay. 
But yeah, I hope this was super helpful for you guys. I saw that a couple people were putting some of the images in the chat. So um, I hope that was helpful for you as well. Um, if for some reason one of them didn't make their way in the chat, let me know. I have them saved on my computer and I can send them to you guys. But I have kept you on for an hour. So <laughs> I will go ahead and let you guys go. Thank you so much for hopping on this semi impromptu Zoom. Um, and here's the thing that I want to leave you with is don't just ruminate on this. Take action on it, write it down and craft it and get serious about it because you're here now. If you've been doing this for a little while, you're here now and you're still in this headspace because you haven't taken that time and you haven't, you haven't made getting really crystal clear a priority. So let's make it a priority and let's get it out of the way and let's create it and craft it so we can move forward into the other next steps that are actually going to start generating leads and interest and authority for you. Um, you've chances are you've waited long enough. So enough waiting, start doing, take action, and then we'll do some of those next steps on Wednesday. But all right, guys, I'll catch you later. Have a good one.